Hi, this is Addy D. Today I'm sharing with you my analysis of the song Beautiful as the Moon, Terrible as an Army with Banners by Henry Cow. This is from their 1975 album In Praise of Learning, featuring Slap Happy. Why transcribe something? Sometimes you hear something that's so unique and exciting, you just feel the need to dig deeper and find out what's going on. I told my partner I was transcribing this song, and she asked me why. Why are you doing that? And I was puzzled. I certainly felt why I wanted to do it, but I couldn't articulate it. So I thought about it. My three good reasons to transcribe something are, one, you like how it sounds. It interests you. Maybe there's something about it that you have never heard before. Number two, you want to know why you like how it sounds. Reveal some of the inner workings, analyze some of the theory and relationships behind it. Number three, you want to play it. By getting these notes under your fingers and performing the sounds that piqued your interest, you may gain a fresh perspective on composition and open your mind to new techniques by executing them in real time. English band Henry Cow is often classified as a progressive rock band, and although they have plenty of insane time signature changes and really long songs, the thing that distinguishes them in my mind is the explorative use of harmonic color. With curious glimpses of dark beauty embedded in these carefully composed pieces, there's an underlying tension teetering on the very verge of atonality. The music here is composed by Fred Frith, who typically plays guitar, but he plays piano on this one. I'll be identifying the song's three main sections as A, B, and C. Each section repeats once, offering us some familiarity and legitimizing the intentionality behind their angular forms. The overall structure, therefore, is A, A, B, B, C, C, a little rhythm vamp, and then C, C again to close out. To help distinguish, I've added names to all three of these sections by pulling a lyric from the opening line of each. Messiness Disclaimer Depending on the difficulty of notating certain rhythms and the amount of revisions my time signatures needed, you may see a varying degree of eraser smudge and sloppiness throughout. Truth is, once I got the score up to a point where it made sense to me, I kind of just left it there. If you'd like to send me $15, I'll make you a nice professional piano arrangement you can play for all your friends at parties. But for now, this is what I'm working with. To the piano. Section A, First Days. It begins with a long tone melody over the pedal bass E, a deceptive descending minor line cliche. And the reason I say deceptive is because the harmony usually does something like this. Landing on either E minor 6 or A7, going on to some circle of fifths thing. But we land on F sharp 7 over E, the melody C sharp being the fifth of the chord, and the E the seventh is in the bass, a rather unexpected sound which reminds me a lot of Olivier Messiaen's writing on the four inversions of seventh chords. This one has E being the seventh in the bass, but you can also recontextualize E as the root, E7, E as the third, C7, E as the fifth, A7, or E as the seventh, where we get our F sharp seven over E. It creates a really cool progression on its own. I indulged heavily in this concept in my drone piano piece, Meditation 3, off of the wildly successful 2017 ambient acoustic Addy D album, 12 Dirges. I'll put a link below. Okay, so E minor descending line, deceptive. Continuing the low E drone, we get the chords D and C sharp minor 7, or just E6, creating this minor blossoming into major effect. Single line repeats, squashing back into minor, little decorations in the upper register. The last measure in 5-4 adds a beat, and the bass starts to move down. We have E flat 6-9, no third, D major 7 with a sixth, to a very nasty chord, also over D. And this one gives us our first taste of a rhythmic theme we'll be seeing much more of later on. I've chosen to analyze this chord as B flat 7 sharp 9 over D, because I just... I guess I just couldn't let it be, but as it functions in no such way, we really are just experiencing a free use of tonal color here. We end our bass descent on a calm D flat add 9 chord, falling into this whole tone chord. And as promised, that off kilter rhythmic ostinato appears fully fleshed.
landing of these two chords, D minor and E, both over the pedal note B, which we'll be seeing a lot more of later on, give this capricious rhythm a sense of shape and arrival. The time signature repeats a pattern of 7-4, 5-4, and 3-8, consisting of four dotted quarters, one quarter, three dotted quarters, and an eighth tied into the dotted quarter of the 3 8 bar, which can be equated to a half note, displaced an eighth note from the pulse. If we weren't trying to fit it into an ugly time signature, the additive rhythm could simply look like this. And as if this section weren't complex enough, the drums emphasize a steady backbeat throughout, playing ignorant of the time changes, creating an exciting polyrhythm, and a new relationship to the ostinato when it repeats, a device employed to great effect by drummer-composer Christian Vander of the French band Magma. Here I attempt to replicate this effect by tapping my foot. There's still a spot in the repeat that I haven't quite got down. It's really hard. The pedal bass B resolves in a 5-1 motion to the pedal E at the top of the tune when we repeat this whole first section. Now enjoy a playthrough of the whole A section without interruption. Section B, Rose Dawn. My personal favorite part, I like to think of this section as climbing Lydian tonalities strung together by chromatic movement in the bass and vocal. Here's what they sound like together. The tension and release is just gorgeous to me. Our three big Lydian arrivals in this section are A Lydian, B Lydian, and C Lydian dominant, sorta. We stay on these tonal centers the longest so they feel like arrivals. At these arrivals, the vocal melody tends to hinge on the fifth and fall to the sharp four, until C when it rises to become the third of E we get a 5-1 motion, with a leading tone going from E back to A. The bass creates this cool octave enclosure effect, narrowing in towards the center, and dropping like bombs with unnervingly unpredictable timing. The busy cymbal work chattering along with these widening piano trinkles hits like an alarm bell between the contracting bass drums, giving two senses of motion at once. In our arrival points of A, B, and C, they have Lydian qualities, but get pretty chromatic in passing. Now please enjoy watching me struggle to play all three parts at once. Section C, Last Days. This third section is a slow, brooding, lyrical passage that shows how much sonic diversity can be created with the simple device of slash chords. It starts with a few familiar colors. 
We have our D minor over B, E over B theme, and that calming D flat add nine chord. Beginning in a three bar phrase, the first settles here, repeats the first three chords, and though the bass movement is the same, the resting chord changes. This stasis is inverted in the following four bar phrase, where the upper structure chords A, B flat, G, and G minor are repeated, but with different bass treatment. This one's cool. You have A over D planing up a half step to B flat over E flat, but the melody leaps from A, the root in A over D, up a fourth to D, the third in B flat over E flat, disguising its simple half step push and making it feel further away than it actually is. Same tune here, but the bass line has changed, now pushing down. And coming to rest on G minor over F sharp, a strong 5-1 root movement getting us back to B for the repeat. Let's take this second time to look at some of the relationships in these slash chords. You have major chords over their fourth, sliding up, a major chord over its sharp four, a minor chord over its major seventh, major chord over its flat sixth, sharp four, flat sixth again, coming to rest on the F sharp dominant pole and leading us into the rhythm vamp. That crazy rhythm ostinato on the note B makes a comeback, and the inclusion of some clear B major colors juxtaposed with our original D minor E theme feels pretty nice. There's this nice lick outlining B major 7 on the downbeats. Then we get into the vamp section, with our D minor E theme making a chromatic side slip into B add 9, then deteriorating into this fuzzy cluster. And I think that's where I'm going to leave it. From here we vamp into atonal infinity as multi-tracked pianos which sound like they're falling down two different sets of stairs pummel this vamp into the ether. Then they go back to the B section to close. I hope you enjoyed this video. I had fun making it as I've been wanting to take apart this song for some time. And sorry again about the messy scores. If you'd like to stick around, I'll now play through the whole thing up to the rhythm vamp with section time markers and a different camera angle.